The Search Partner Network is a group of sites that utilize Google Search to fuel a search function on their website. For some accounts, it can be a great expansion of the Google Search campaigns if they're performing well, but in other accounts, it can be kind of a problem because they don't always perform well. Until recently, we've really only had an all-in or all-out option when it comes to search partners, but now we're getting a little more control of how we can start targeting or excluding specific placements. So in this video, we want to talk about what the update is and talk about a couple of ways that we can start to adjust the placements that we show up on on the search partner network. I want to first highlight a couple of the pain points that we see with Google search partners. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, they can sometimes be really good tools for your campaigns, but other times they can cause some issues. We had a specific couple of examples of where search partners were causing problems over the last few weeks in two separate accounts, and they each have different ways that they were causing issues. So the first one, I'm highlighting a specific week for this account, and we got word that we were seeing a lot of spam leads come through. Just an influx in them, didn't know where they came from. But if you look here, all the performance for the campaigns looks pretty similar to each other and also pretty similar to what we normally see in the account. Since we've had this problem with search partners before, this was the first place I looked. So I filtered for the week that we needed it to be in the moment. And I came in here and I clicked segment. And to see search partner performance, we need to come down here to network with search partners. Once I did that, pretty clear to me what the problem was. This first campaign here, we see Google search, Google search partners, we look at conversion performance. They're pretty similar to each other. Cost per conversion is pretty similar. And even though I don't love this distribution of cost, typically I like Google search to have a lot more. This isn't too far out of the realm of normal. Now where normal really butts up against what we were seeing here, this campaign, which typically has pretty low volume, all of a sudden went nuts. We've got $8,200 in spend for search partners, only 500 for Google search, one conversion on Google search, 35 for Google search partners, and the cost per conversion is quite a bit lower. On average, this campaign typically has higher cost per conversion because it's a competitive keyword set and it's very specific. So overall, this was a very quick flag to me that this was not reasonable performance. We've since turned off search partners for this campaign and everything has come back into normal ranges and we're not seeing spam leads come through anymore. But problem leads are just one issue that we see with search partners. The other is that it's highly variable and it has nothing to do with actual search traffic. Let's jump into a different account real quick. And here I've got the last 90 days showing up for this campaign because this actually happened just this week. Performance was overall pretty consistent for a little while. And then recently we've been scaling up as we got more budget and we were seeing good results for our campaigns. But earlier this week, when I came in and ran projections, which I do once a week for campaigns that have not had significant changes to them, but I noticed that spend was way higher than it should have been. So just like last time with the spam leads coming through, I came into the account, noticed that we saw a really big increase in spend despite me not having made a change that would have resulted in that. I came over to our segment option, segmented by search partners. And here you can see we did have an increase in cost for Google search, which is the blue line, but Google search partners stayed pretty much the same all up until last Friday when we all of a sudden had $118 in spend which prior to that, the most we'd seen was 162 for one day. We'd seen a little bit, but usually we're in maybe the $25 range for this set of campaigns. And like I said, last Friday, 118, then up to 215 on Saturday, 500 on Sunday, 452 on Monday, 404 on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday when I caught it, back down to 87, and then back down to 28 whole cents for Thursday. Now in this instance, it was cost that caused me to see that something was wrong here. But conversions, we found out later, had also become really spammy over this time period. That's because we all of a sudden got a huge influx from search partners, and that caused some issues. Now I wanna say a caveat here really quickly. I'm not saying that all traffic coming from search partners is bad. Both of these accounts are B2B software as a service solutions, and in my experience, those tend to have higher ratios of spam leads on search partners than other business types, but we have had many instances where they perform well, which is why they were turned on in the first place. At this point, we kind of turn them on periodically, monitor performance, turn them back off when we see issues, but we do repeatedly go through that cycle because just like you can see here, the search partner network and who's in it and who is applicable to your campaigns changes all the time. 
something happened last Friday, and now this account became eligible for somebody or some group of people's websites in the search partner network to where traffic increased. Now, as I mentioned previously, search partners are, for the most part, an all in or all out category. So all I did to eliminate that is come to the gear icon for all the campaigns we were seeing issues with and checked out of the box of search partners, which was already applied. So again, I unchecked it and you're probably going to see an alert that looks like this. And this is why I checked the box because I want you to know that yes, most advertisers include their ads on the Google search partner sites. That does not mean they guaranteed see good performance. Don't let these alerts scare you off of making sure that you're spending your money in the way that is the most efficient for your campaigns. I don't need to click save because we were already opted out. But as I've talked about, we now have updated controls for search partners. Let's go check out the new announcement. On this page in the Google Help articles, you can see that starting in March of 2024, AKA when this video is recorded, account level placement exclusions will now also apply to the search partner network. That means that websites on search partner network will be excluded if an advertiser has them in the exclusions at the account or manager account level. And this will apply to all campaign types that serve on the search partner network. That includes performance max, app campaigns, search campaigns, shopping, and smart campaigns. This is a huge update to the controls that we have. So let's jump back into one of the accounts and I'll show you how to create these account level exclusions. We're just gonna be in the first account that I showed you because I'm actually gonna make one of the changes that we're talking about today. To create an account level placement exclusion list, come up to tools and settings, placement exclusion lists. We do not have any setup for this account just yet, but if we want to, we can create a list. And then you can find individual YouTube channels, YouTube videos, websites, apps, and app categories to exclude at the account level. And this will apply to all search partner networks. So one thing I wanna do is come down to websites. And here you would need to type in the website URL that you want to have excluded. It is a well-known fact that ask.com is a member of the search partner network. They fuel all of their search results with Google search ads. So if I don't want my ads to show up on ask.com, if somebody searches there, but I do wanna remain active on all other search partner sites, all I would need to do is check the box here, give my placement exclusion list a name, and then add this to my entire account or my manager account. So with this, there are two things I want you to note. First, Applying this at the account level means that not only will you not show on search partners on ask.com, you won't show any ads that can be display, any of your other placements. So before you take this step, make sure that you definitely want to exclude ask.com from your entire account and not just trying to focus on search partners. At that point, if you see good performance from ask.com for other campaign types, and you can check the where ads showed report for that, then you might wanna leave it as a placement and just think about something else to do with search partners. But the second thing to know is that I only know ask.com shows up for search partners because as I mentioned, it's a well-known fact. Unfortunately, from the outside, we don't have any way of knowing what all of the websites are in the Google search partner network. There used to be some ways that you could find it through reports in the API. You might still be able to do that, but I have not been able to replicate it on my end. If somebody can do that, please leave a note in the comments below and tell us how you do it. But the only way that I know of right now is to contact your Google rep and ask them for a list of all of the search partner sites that your ad showed up on. Some might do it, some won't. But just tell them that you want to stay opted into the search partner network, but you're seeing bad performance, so you need to narrow down a little bit. Again, if you've had any experience doing that, tell us all about it in the comments. We always like to hear what some reps will do, but there's one major category of placements that we can exclude without needing to know the website URLs. So here I'm gonna click cancel. Instead, I'm gonna head up into tools and settings and go to content suitability. If we scroll down a little bit, we're gonna find content types and labels. And in this option, you can see down here, parked domains are search only. So if we check the box here, which I am for sure going to do in this account, that means that we will not show up on any parked domains that are part of the search partner network. And unfortunately, lots of parked domains are part of the search partner network. People take advantage of the fact that they have slight typos for major websites and then serve Google search ads for them that are pretty relevant to what the original site was supposed to be. And a lot of times people don't know the difference they're still going to your search ad as the end result. But rather than going through regular Google search, 
or going direct to your website, they instead got hit with a Google search partner ad. That search partner makes the money for the click through the AdSense network. And then the user heads off finding ideally what they needed in the first place. In my experience, these perform sometimes okay, sometimes not. But in this account, we're specifically having some issues with parked domains that are similar to regular searches. So here I'm just gonna click save. And now our ads will not show on parked domains for any of our search campaigns on the search partner network. And unlike the placements that we talked about earlier, this will not impact our display campaigns because remember, it's search only. That's all it's gonna impact. So this is a no brainer for me for this account, but maybe test it out in yours. Maybe do a before and after. Keep your campaigns opted into the search partner network, exclude parked domains, and then see if performance gets a little bit better for search partners afterward or if your spam leads go down, something along those lines. Overall, we still have pretty limited control for the search partner network through our Google Ads accounts, but this recent update is making it so we do have a little bit more control if you can find that search partner URL list to start excluding people from in the first place. If you have any additional questions about the search partner network or how to make exclusions on them, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.